An experiment consists of first rolling the die and then tossing a coin. Part A is list the sample space. Well, the sample, they give you uh, five choices and it's clearly the third choice because the sample space is every possible outcome. So if we're rolling a die, we could get a one and then tossing a coin, we could get a heads or a tail. If we roll a two, we could get a head and rolling a two, we could get a tail. So for each number that we could get on tossing the die, one, two, three, four, five, or six, we could get a head or a tail with that number. So we can see that there are 12 possible outcomes in the sample space of first rolling a die and then tossing a coin. Part B, let A be the event that either a three or a four is rolled first, followed by landing on a head on the coin toss. We want to know the probability of A. Well, in general, the probability of any event is the number of times that event occurs divided by the total number of things that could occur. And so if we look at this, we can get either a three or a four roll first, followed by a head. So we have three with a head, and we have four with a head. And those are the only two outcomes of this experiment that match the event A. So the probability of A is equal to two, the number of outcomes that match event A, divided by 12, the number, the total possible number of outcomes. And so if we reduce that fraction, it's equal to one sixth. Finally, part C, we have a new experiment that consists of first rolling a die and then tossing a coin twice. B is the event that the first and second coin tosses land on head. And C is the event that either a three or a four is rolled first followed by landing a head on the first coin toss. Are the events B and C mutually exclusive? Well, mutually exclusive would mean that if event B happened, C couldn't happen. And if event C happened, B couldn't happen. So we want to see if events B and C have any common outcomes. If they have any common outcomes, then they're not going to be mutually exclusive. So let's look first at event B. And so that's, um, we could get anything on the, the die, rolling the die, but we're gonna get heads, uh, the, both the first and second coin toss land on heads. So that's gonna be a one with heads, and head, a two with heads and heads, and those are H's, sorry, a three with heads and heads, a four with heads and heads, five with heads and heads, and six with heads and heads. Event C is you're going to have either a three or a four roll first, followed by landing on a head on the first coin toss. So we could have a three, that's a three, with heads and heads, and then we could have a three with heads and tails. We could have a four with heads and heads, and a four with heads and then tail. So if I look to see if there are any common outcomes, I can see that the three heads heads is common and the four heads heads is common. There are no other common outcomes, but we do have two outcomes that are common to both B and C. 
And so if it's B and C are not mutually exclusive, because the first and second coin tosses can land on heads when a three or a four is rolled. So please, if you have any questions uh, about this problem, this was a little bit of an involved problem, um, just contact me and let me know and I'll see if I can help you. Thank you.